Okay, this is 10.5 polarization of light. Now, this lesson is mostly conceptual, just um, so that you understand the idea of polarized light and what it means. So, polarized light is light that vibrates in a single plane. So, on the last lesson, we were talking about how light is made up of two pieces. It's made, of, made up of the um, electric field and the magnetic field. And those two fields are always perpendicular to each other. And they're always also perpendicular to the direction of travel. So, if you look to the right here, we have a picture. Our light is traveling in this direction, which means that the electric field could be vibrating in any plane perpendicular to that. So you see it could be vibrating up down like this. It could be vibrating forward backward, it could be vibrating on this angle. There's all sorts of different directions that that light could be vibrating in. And when we have regular unpolarized light, that's what's happening. We have all sorts of light all added together. They're all vibrating in different directions. So we actually it's made up of usually all polarities, all different angles that it could be vibrating at. So that's our regular unpolarized light. But when we send it through something like a polarizer here, a polarizer is something that will block any light that is not vibrating in a certain direction. So you can see here we have our unpolarized light, and it goes through our polarizer, and the only thing that gets through is light that's vibrating up and down like this. So that's our linearly polarized light. And um, you can have that polarizer in different orientations. You could have it horizontally instead. But whatever it is, it's going to only let one polarity of light through. And so you can see that that's the, the sort of the end result there. That is our polarized light. And polarized light has a lot of applications. One that you might be the most familiar with is 3D movies nowadays. Our 3D movies, usually one lens of your glasses, is light that is polarized in one direction, let's say up-down. And the other eye is light that's polarized in the other direction, let's say left-right. And so the idea is that um, on the projection, you have two different movies being played. And one of the movies, so two of them are projected onto the screen. If you take your glasses off, you'll see a blurry screen because it's actually two different images. And as soon as you put your lights on, or your glasses on, one of those images gets through to your left eye, the other one gets through to your right eye. That's because one of them is all polarized um, for the one eye, and the other one is all polarized in the opposite direction for your other eye. And the glasses are set up to, to work that way. So that's the idea here of our polarized light. It's useful for a lot of uh, purposes. And we've got a few different ways that we can polarize things. So this first one here, polarization by selective absorption. That's using something like these um, polarizers. Okay. So when we pass light through one of these polarizers, only the component of light <coughs> parallel to the axis of polarization gets through. So it cuts out any light that's not along the axis of polarization. And we have a law that goes along with that, Malice's law, which tells us the intensity of the new light. We send light through, and only some of it ends up getting through. So the intensity, the relationship here is that I out, the out intensity, is equal to I in cosine squared theta, where theta is the angle between the original light's polarity and the axis of polarization. So let's say that um, on this picture up here, my light is coming in on some angle like this, which means that if I compare it to this up-down direction, maybe it has a theta 
of 10 degrees, something like that. And then it's going through my polarizer, this sheet of glass, which is polarizing everything up down. So that means our angle is 10 degrees between it, which means that our um, end light is going to be reduced by the cosine squared of 10 degrees. That's the relationship. So that's kind of useful. It also means that if your input light is a whole wash of every possible direction, it's completely unpolarized. If, our, if we have unpolarized input light, then it means that the output energy is equal to half of the input in energy. So it just means that using a polarizer will cut your total energy or your total intensity in half if you've got original unpolarized light. Great. Okay, so we've got, um, that's the first way that we can polarize light, is by sending it through something called a polarizer. And that's how your 3D glasses work. They send both the lights through these polarizers. Now the next one here, polarization by reflection. This happens any time light reflects off of a surface. Some of that reflected light is polarized. And it depends on the angle and the material, how much of the light is polarized. And here's why. Light can only travel perpendicular to its fields. Travel perpendicular to its electric and magnetic fields. Right, it can only travel in that direction. That's always, always true that the magnetic and electric fields are perpendicular to the direction of motion. So, some polarities of light are forced to refract to refract instead of reflect. So some light is not able to reflect because if it did, it would have to be reflecting in the direction that it was already vibrating, which means it would have to completely change the direction it was vibrating and that would not work very well. So it resists that reflection and instead it just goes refracts into the medium. And so that always happens. Whenever we have a reflection, some of the light is just not able to reflect because of its polarity. And there's actually a certain angle called Brewster's angle, which determines where that happens the most. So just to, to show you on the picture over here, you can see that we have input light coming in this way. And you can see it's right now it's got all polarities. So some of that um, light is vibrating in this sort of perpendicular direction, and some of it is vibrating in and out, uh, into and out of the page. So forward, backward from our perspective. And what this picture is showing is that when it reflects, only the light that was vibrating in and out of the page, towards us and away from us, only that light is able to reflect. The light that was vibrating up and down is forced to refract because Otherwise, if it was trying to reflect, it would be reflecting right into the direction that it was vibrating, and that doesn't really work. Okay? So that's the idea, is that the reflected light is all coming in this direction towards us and away from us. Now, I say all. It really depends on the angle, but that's how light can be polarized when it's reflecting. So we have something called Brewster's angle, which is the incident angle. where the reflected light is maximally polarized. So where we get the most polarization on a reflection. And Brewster's law tells us what that angle is. That law is tan of theta b, where theta b is Brewster's angle, is equal to N2 over N1. 
And there we go. Uh, so we only have a few equations for this section. That's the whole idea. There's lots more about polarization in your textbook, and there's uh, some very interesting things. But this is as much as I expect you to know for this lesson. You can see at the bottom there, there's a few homework problems. Give them a try and enjoy.